Thank you, everyone. This is Kristen Colsus. I'm the FAO D Groups Administrator, and I'm also a board member along with Neil. And um, you may know that FAO is one of the UN specialized agencies working on food security, loves nutrition, fighting hunger. There's a lot of work to do, and knowledge networks and communities are very, very much part of this work. We have about well, 9,700 people in the 95 or so FAOD groups, and um, there's a lot of interest in it. We don't advertise. We don't have much resources to run this, but it's quite popular. And um, we're going to talk specifically about one of our groups, which is the Food for Cities group. We were used a lot for internal groups, external groups, meeting preparations, meeting follow-up. There's a multitude of ways we use the D-groups, and we find them very useful. Just before we go, I hand over to Julienne. I wanted to mention that we also spend a lot of work not just on opening a D-group, but on the actual process of launching a knowledge network or a community. We ask new groups in general, the ones who are new to D-groups, to then take a step back, think about what are they trying to achieve, what kind of audience do they have? What kind of modularity do they need to use with their people? Is it one to many, many to many? Is it private? Is it public? What kind of technological issues do they have? Are they going to need moderation training? So we really try and talk to people to see first what will work for them. And as we say here, sometimes D-Groups is the answer, sometimes it's not. We try and find a tool that works for people so they can focus on the conversation and the technical exchange and not worry about the technology. And for that, we found D-Groups very useful. I also just want to, before I hand over again, just to say that don't underestimate the time and resources it takes to run a network or a community. There's a lot of visible work. There's also a lot of invisible work behind the scenes to make sure that people feel included and welcomed, and it's, it's a space where people can exchange and discuss. So on that note, I'm handing over to Julienne, who will be giving you, let's see, click on the right button here, make him presenter. Do you have presenting rights? He will be talking about food for cities, which we think is a very nice example of what can be done. Over to you, Julienne. Okay, thanks, Christine. So I will speak about and, uh, the Z group, Food for Cities Z group and my experience among this uh, Z group. So the Food for Cities Z group is a network and discussion is associated with the Food for Cities multidisciplinary initiative in FAO. And this initiative has been set up in 2000. The D group itself started in 2009. So it's a second time, the setting up of the initiative within FAO, building the community of people within FAO, and the launch of the discussion. And in fact, the D groups was an outcome of a workshop that took place in FAO 2009, uh, in which and one of the outcomes was that, and I wrote it here, the participants decided to put in place an email discussion list to foster further collaborative work. And then we discussed with the different people in FAO, including Christine, and this is when we decided that D groups could be a good uh, a good place to a good tool to develop it. So then the main objective of the the, the list we were setting setting up was to bring together people working on different aspects of urbanization challenges for food and nutrition security, agriculture and management of natural resources. So it's quite a wide approach of the of different issues and in fact it covers about all the different activities of FAO. And we are looking to bring participants from the public sector, both from national and local government, municipalities, and international organizations, so FAO, but also other UN agencies as WSP, the World Food Program, UN Habitat, UNEP, and many others, as well as academics and GIC and the private sector. And I would say from the experience that it's the most difficult actors to get in the private sector because they have their own policies within their institution companies and it makes them difficult to, to see. 
So one of the issue is to get new members. So how to do it with the with the D groups? Either by invitation or by addition. And this is one of the questions we have to answer at the very beginning. So first of all, we have an active cooptation of members to to get members. So when we meet people, we invite them to come on the D groups. And about at every meeting I go to, I invite people to join the group. So it's an active, very active activity. Uh, yeah, activity. So, and I realize that sending invitation is really not efficient because when you send an invitation with the group, people often don't follow up. They forget or they put the message uh, somewhere and they forgot to, to fill it in afterwards. So what we do most often is to, after the informal discussion we have had with the people interested, I add their name on the list. And then I inform, I send them an email to inform them that they have been added on the list. And I mentioned that they can unsubscribe at any time. So it's a bit intrusive, but not too much because they have the option to get out. And I think it's one of the efficient way to, to develop the network. Then one of the problem with the D group that we cannot easily monitor who are the people who have left the list. So we know who is coming in, we don't know who is going out. So this is one of the negative points of for managing the, the community. Then so we, we have set up since uh, three years and like this, the networks were set up in two thousand nine. So in, in three years we started with about one hundred people and now we have one thousand nine hundred people on the list from, and you see on the map, many, more than 100 countries, mainly in Italy, because there is FAO is in Italy, so we have people from FAO, but also from Italian people outside FAO, but the, the proximity brings uh, interested people. And then we have people worldwide in all the countries, so a lot in the US, in uh, different countries, across Europe and in Africa, South America and Asia. We have a lot of people in Kenya and in Thailand because we organize two workshops there enable us to make many contacts and to attract people. We have a good so good overview of where the people are from but we are missing about 700 people who are today unlocated because they have not filled in the form to indicate their country. So we have we are missing some information there. So, uh, so D group is a mailing list and it's just a mailing list. So it's uh, at and sometimes when we talk about it at the edge of the social media people are surprised that we are still using a simple tool like this. But as it's simple it makes it very robust and useful and anyone can have access to it without any password or any login requirement. So this is one of the powerful features of the D group. And one other thing very, I think very positive is that it's a neutral platform. So it's not, there is no, no private company behind it. Then the interface for the administrator has been improved recently and it's very positive for me. Uh, but for the users, in fact, it's quite natural because about no one go to the to the back office. And just one comment: sometimes it's a bit slow when you send a message or you approve a message. It takes a couple of hours to get on uh, online. Sometimes it's just a couple of minutes. Sometimes it's a couple of hours. So sometimes this is a bit annoying. And for today, uh, currently, on the food for cities, we have one, two, and up to ten messages a day. Then the facilitation of the discussion is obviously one of the big tasks we have. Uh, some, so what I do as a facilitator, I send some messages from time to time on general matters just to give some general ideas or to launch a discussion. I do quite a lot of back office work, so proposing people to send information when they sometimes I receive I said direct information, so I propose the people who send me the information to share it with all the network and sometimes there's 
a couple of exchanges before they agree to send it. And I encourage to have short messages, maximum alpha page with only one idea, if that's taking of the S, so just one idea per message, and with a specific added value for the food for city thematic. So no general messages, but focusing on one message and adapting the message to the interest of the list. And, uh, and I know I can count on a core group of people within and outside SEO. I would say about 20 people I can rely on more effectively. Then it's an open knowledge platform, so it's just to the core of the issue, the, the core business of the list is to provide a common ground on food system approaches and food Food for Cities, the list does not replace but tries to connect other networks and initiatives. So it's really a, a network on which other people can build their own expertise and their own network. And the Food for Cities just belongs to the one who participates. SEO facilitates the network but don't, does not really and does not own the network. The network belongs to everyone. And while we make it open and uh, like an open source uh, network, there is obviously and pro uh, probably, but uh, some spies, some people just coming to get some information and develop their own communities activities. But this is the the rule of the of the game, and we have to accept it if we want to keep on an open information. So, so it's a discussion list and and just a discussion list and. And yes, so there is no, it's, it's just a discussion, so there is no summary of the discussion. We don't try to make a, when, when there's a thread of exchanges, we don't sum up and make a compilation of the discussion because it would take too much time and we don't have enough resources. And we don't use the archives of the D groups. And one of the maybe lack of uh, of D group is that there is no connection with the collaborative uh, tool. So the, it, it's a flow of information. This is maybe too bad, but it also gives a lot of freedom of discussion because some people can make a mistake, some people can say some stuff that are not backed by the organization, but whatever, because the next day the information will be lost. So it enables a lot of freedom in the discussion. So issues to consider, one list it's all, no, but so it's, it's, just, it's a global list to cover all the issues, so it's a lot of thematic, we try to set up subgroups, but it's difficult to do it. So we are starting one on South America, but it's a lot of effort to get it started. To moderate or not to moderate, at the beginning we were not moderating the list, so any message sent was going public immediately. Now, because we received too many spams, we started to moderate. It's not as good, I think, because it's, it's the freedom of speech is less. But at least we avoid the spams and we avoid the message to all, the reply to all. Then full time, I will full time job or just a new way of working. Christine mentioned that it was a full time job. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's true. But in a way, if you think you integrate really the list in your in your business, in the way you have to work, then you can consider that it's just a, it's part of your activity. And it's not just some work on top of your normal business, but it's really integrated in your business. And it's not really more work, but it's a new way of working. And on the languages, we use only English sometimes French, and I will consider that it's no translation. Translation is too too difficult and and time-consuming. So I just take one uh, couple of more second minutes, one more minute. So the achievements, it's an effective global network. So we have built a community. We are doing information sharing about meetings, preparation of visits. Uh, connecting to other discussion needs like the FSM forum, Food Security Network, uh, Food Security and Nutrition Forum, which is a global discussion on food security and we connect it with our Food for Cities list. But not so much discussion on projects because there is a fundraising issue behind it and people don't want to share information on fund, fundraising. 
Then we develop a, a food for cities uh, paper using the list to get inputs and uh, contribution and comments. And so we are developing a local food system approach thanks to the list. And um, yeah, we'll skip this. And so from the list, we are now a community of people. So it's not just a tool now; it's really a, a community. And let's comment. It's 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 long to set up a list, and I would say it's nine months, maybe it's eight or ten. But to get the list started, to get people active on the list. It takes nine months. So when people want to start a D group just to launch a, D, a, a specific discussion, I think it's useless. You really need, it takes time to, to build trust and confidence. And then people are really able to contribute. But it's, I would say, nine months to get anything started on the network. And the question is how to get, to go more collaborative and how to link the D groups with a website or with a, I don't know, any Facebook or uh, Yammer or Twitter or anything like this. And is it useful and how to do it? Thank you.